brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Go ahead, then. Play that doggone double six. I know you got it. Okay, Doc. That's how you want it. There it is. <laughs> yes, I knew it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fine way for a couple of grown-up men to spend their time playing dominoes. <laughs> well, it's better than fighting that storm outside, anyway. Mm, maybe you're right at that. I wouldn't go out in that weather tonight if a plague were raging. Sure play, Doc. Or a dozen babies were about to be born. It's your play, Doc. Quit stalling, will you? Come on, lay one down. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. Man's got to think in this game, you know. Not if he can count to 12, he doesn't. Yeah, my. It seems like wind. The worst blizzard in years, man. Yeah, it still hasn't hit its peak. Well, how's Kitty getting along, Doc? Huh? Well, her throat's been sore, but just a touch of the grip. Oh. I told her to stay in bed for another day or so. Come on, play, will you, Doc? It's your play. It's your play, Doc. Doc. Oh, I... That's a trouble. I never do have any luck playing in my own office. (laughs) I thought you said this game was a matter of thinking. What's about you? Oh, Chester, close the door. Close the door. I told your horses, Doc. I didn't figure you'd step a foot outside that jail for the next two days. What's the matter? Johnny got away. Got away? You mean Clay Macklin? Yes, sir. Well, what happened? Well, sir, I was picking some coffee, and he yelled out from his cell and asked could he have some, and when I took it to he him... Jumped he you, jumped you, huh? Yes, sir, he jumped me, yeah. that's all. Now, I, I wouldn't have been so careless with nobody else, but he ain't never tried to get away before. Well, he jumped you, though. Jumped well, I don't know why I tried it this time. You've got no case against him. Clay Macklin's been rustling cattle for the last two years, Doc. But you can't prove it, and you know it. Judge Bent will turn him loose the minute he's brought to trial. Yeah, maybe, but he's going to stand trial anyway. Yeah, well, what are you planning to do? Go after him, of course. In this weather? It'll have to be in this weather, Doc. I don't know any way of changing it. been gone about three hours, huh, Justin? Oh, pretty near that, Mr. Dillon. I'd have been locking that dog on cell too yet if Ben Elder hadn't seen Macklin riding out of town finally got curious enough to come over to the jail. Well, it took him long enough. <laughs> That's because he figured Macklin had been turned loose. Whoa. Everybody in town knows he will be sooner or later. Uh, maybe. Marshal? Marshal Dillon? Mm, sound like old Judge Bent. Yeah. Over here, Judge. Well... Why don't you turn that blame landing up so a man can see his way around? And I guess I've been saddling horses long enough not to need much light. Even Judge. Oh, it's just a... Hey, Matt, what's this duck tells me about you heading out on a wild goose chase? I'm going to bring Clay Macklin back, that's all. But why? When a prisoner escapes, I go after him, Judge. 
Good. What good will it do to go riding off blind into a storm like this and probably lose your life for nothing? Oh, it's not that bad. Macklin was seen riding out of town southwest. The only thing in reach down that way is the Chick Four Cattle Company. Mm-hmm. They got two line cabins toward the summer on, and Macklin used to work for the Chick Four. Mm-hmm. All right. And suppose you do find him holed up in one of those cabins. Suppose you are able to bring him back. You know I'm just going to have to turn him loose, don't you? Well, that's your job, not mine, Judge. Well, now, Matt, for the love of Look, I've had Macklin in jail for two weeks waiting trial, and every day I've had to listen to him brag how he'd get off scot-free, hear him sneer at the law, make a big joke out of it. All right, Matt. Tonight he's out to prove he doesn't even have to wait for the law to decide on his case. I don't like that, Judge. I happen to be a lawman. All right, Chester, if you're settled up, let's start riding. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Live modern. Smoke modern. Smoke L&M. Enjoy full, exciting flavor through L&M's pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. That's why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. I just don't think I can go on much longer without resting up a little. That cabin's bound to be pretty close around here. You better keep moving. Yeah, but he might not even be there when we find it. He'll be there, all right. He wasn't in the first one. The more reason he'll be at this one. No place else to shelter. Wait a minute. What? Off to the left, there. the snow cleared for a second. I thought I saw it. Well, I sure do hope so. Well, let's head over that way, huh? It'll be gone in another half hour. Yeah, there it is. That's the cabin, all right. Come on. You know what happened to that cabin? Yeah. We got a lot colder before we got warmer. Only we haven't missed it. You think Macklin's going to put up a fight? No. I think he'll figure about the way Doc and Judge Bent did. Only a couple of crazy men had come after him in a storm like this. You know, I kind of agree with him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, you still came along, though, didn't you? Yeah, but I ain't too sure why. Yeah, let's leave the horses here and go up on foot. All right, sir. Oh. He's here, all right. There's a horse standing in the lane to there. Oh, my, a fire sure going to feel mighty good, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, if he's got one. All right, I'll hit the door and go in fast, and you follow me in, huh? Yes, sir. All right. What? All right, hold it, Macklin. Don't try for it. Well, the marshal. Tie his hands, Chester. Yes, sir. Turn around there, Macklin. Well, you sure did catch me asleep. That's a fact. Probably safe having to kill you, Macklin. Maybe. How's the weather out? <laughs> you boys look kind of red-nosed. Been drinking, have you? Oh. You're a real talky fella, ain't you? 
I didn't figure you'd go to this much trouble just for nothing, Marshal. No, I didn't think you would. Hey, there's the makings for coffee over there, Mr. Dillon. Will it fix this time? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Better be careful, Chester. That's what got you into trouble last night, making coffee. Well, you don't never catch a fox the same way twice, Macklin. And, and one thing sure, you ain't gonna get none this time. I drank a pot full before I went to sleep. I kind of had it on you, boys. I got in ahead of the worst of the storm. Yes, sir. Well, ought to be a slab of bacon around somewhere, maybe some flour. Why don't you rustle us up something to eat while you're at it, huh? Yeah, well, there's flour here, all right. Bacon's probably one of them cans. Uh, speaking of rustling, Marshal... Don't no push your luck, Michael. Oh, well, now, you're one of them high-minded lawmen. You wouldn't mistreat a helpless prisoner. I'd regret it afterwards, if that's what you mean. <laughs> My golly, I bet you would, then. Yeah, I, I found the bacon, Mr. Young. Uh -huh. Hey, a three, four pound piece. Well, right. don't cook all of it. Well, maybe half. There's three of us got to eat off that till the storm blows itself out. Maybe a week. Well, then they luck, Macklin. We'll be back in Dodge before midnight tonight. What are you talking about? I couldn't stand your company for a week. We're heading out as soon as we eat. In this weather? Why, that's the craziest fool thing I ever heard. Macklin. What? Why don't you shut up? Yourself of old fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up, freshen up your taste. Smoke an LM. Only the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip can bring all of LM's full, exciting flavor through to you. And that's the big reason why today. More people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. Remember, L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So live modern. Change to L&M. Make your day your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Dodge. Lead him close to you, Chester. He'll follow if you're breaking trail for him. Macklin, stay with us. Stop trying to drift off like that. I ain't trying nothing. You don't tie my hands. Maybe I could lead this fool horse straight. You can lead him straight. Now get back over this way. Breaking snow trail for a horse. Already on his back with him breaking trail. We wasted an hour trying that. Now, easy now. Here's the edge of the ice. Back on the flat. It was... Wind cutting its pieces and down here in the river bottom where there's a little shudder, the snow is four foot deep. Wait a minute, Chester. Let me test that ice. This freeze came out pretty fast and there's still live water underneath. Sounds pretty solid, Mr. John. Yeah, it'll hold us, all right. Hey, Macklin, come back here. How many times do I have to tell you to stay close? Simmer down, Marshal. I've crossed as much ice in my time as you have. Hey, he me. broke through. Let go of the reins, Macklin. If that horse goes in with you, he'll kick you to death. Oh, let go. Chester, mount up. Then have me one end of your lariat, What are huh? you going to do? I'm going in after him. No, Come you put in that water. You'll freeze to death. His hands are tied, Chester. Oh, Goodness, here. Marshal, yeah. 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 want you to help me? Come here. Help me. Uh, easy now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we're not out of here in 30 seconds, we won't come out at all. Now, come on. Hurry up, Mr. Ellen. Hurry. Steady, Macklin. I got hold of you. I got a permit from
All right, Chester. Pick up your horse, but easier. You'll pull my arms off. All right, steady, Michael. Uh, hang on, Mr. Miller. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, come on. Uh, All right, a little more, Chester. Easy. Easy. Yes. Yeah. All right, Chester. All right, Chester. Let's get a fire going, huh? It's a big one. Fast. By Jing, if it was left to my choosing, I'd sit right here with this fire to let gall down some blows itself out. Get pretty hungry in a couple of days, Chuck. I'm pretty hungry right now. Well, I never saw the time when you weren't. How are you feeling, Mr. Dillon? Well, I've seen better days. How are you making out, Michael? I ain't never going to take another bath as long as I live. Well, you are lucky to be alive. Sure. Who we ain't? Well, we better get ready to push on. We're only about a half hour out of Dodge. It won't be so bad. You know, I just can't figure you, Marshal. No? I've known lawmen before. Crooked, most of them. But I ain't ever known one like you. Is that so? Well, take this thing of coming after me in a storm like this. You didn't have to do that, did you? Depends on how you look at it, I guess. What do you mean? I got a job to do, Macklin. Try to do it right. Besides, I guess I got a kind of respect for the law. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, I'd say the law is a set of rules to make things run smoother. Written out so everybody knows what they are and what the penalties are. And the rules hold for a lawman the same as for anybody else. Maybe even more so. What rules are you talking about? When a prisoner escapes, it's your job to go after him. Bring him back. That's one of them. Even when they're going to turn me loose and everybody knows it? That's up to the court. It's got nothing to do with me. It just don't make sense. Not to you, maybe. I reckon you'll try to tell me there's some rule about you jumping into that water and dragging me out? When a prisoner in custody is not able to look out for himself, it's up to the lawman to take care of him. Well, I wouldn't have jumped in after you. I'd have cut out and run for it. Yeah, I guess you would. I ain't too sure that's why you've done it, Marshal. Just because of some rule. Well, you figure it your way. Anyway, I'm much obliged for you hauling me out of there. <laughs> sure thought I was done for Come on, let's get started. I got a jail cell waiting for you. Yeah, I guess old Judge Ben finally made up his mind, Mr. Jones. You don't show much respect for the court, Chester. There he goes. Well, as you all know, I ain't one of them judges that deals in a lot of legal jabber. (laughs) So I'll just say it out plain. Clay Macklin, stand up and face the court. Now, I puzzled this evidence over every which way, Macklin. And I tried to find some way to give you your just desserts. And me and every man in this courtroom knows you've been rustling cattle. Now, Judge, that ain't no way to talk. Get up. Like I said, you're nothing but a cow thief. But by golly, there just ain't enough evidence to stick you on it. It wouldn't do no good if I tried because some book judge up in Topeka had reversed me on it just as sure as shooting. Yeah, I'm sorry, Marshal Dillon. I know you went to a heap of trouble. That's all right, Judge. Well, all I can do is throw the case out. Dismiss. Well, it's a crying shame, that's what it is. 
Judgment did the only thing he could, Chester. It was just an outside chance anyway. But everybody in town knows Macklin's guilty. A man's innocent until he's proved guilty in a court of law, Chester. So Macklin's innocent. Uh, Marshal Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Macklin? Uh, the judge let me off all right. Yeah. But the... There's something I want to say. You can pick up your stuff at the jail whenever you want. No, no, that, that ain't it, Marshal. Something. Uh, well, I reckon you wouldn't believe me if I was to tell you. Tell me what? Well, you kind of give me some things to think about, Marshal. Oh? Uh-huh. What? Saving my life the way you've done. The rules. All that. So? Uh... Well, I don't know for sure, but, well, maybe I won't be doing any more rustling, Marshal. Not that I ever did, mind you. Oh, I see it. Well, uh, I just, just want to say thank you. I uh, guess I'll be leaving now. Bye. Well, I never. I guess this Macklin ain't all bad after all. No man is, Chester. No, sir. Hmm. Tell you what, just to prove it to you, I'm going to buy you a drink. You are? Uh huh. Rye with a little sugar in it? <laughs> Why not? Come on. Our star, William Conrad, America's Protestants, Catholics, and Jews, are strengthening the bonds of brotherhood and friendship by helping the needy overseas. Through their houses of worship, these three faiths are sending voluntary relief to virtually every free country in the world. Hundreds of millions of pounds of goods, clothing, and medicine will go to victims of war, disaster, and famine in many parts of the world. More than 80% of American voluntary relief work for the hungry and needy overseas is conducted through the religious agencies of these three major faith groups. When you share with needy persons overseas through your house of worship, you are promoting the spirit of democracy that unites all peoples for peace and goodwill. You are keeping faith with the finest tradition and heritage of America. CBS Radio urges you to keep faith with those in need overseas by giving as much as you can through your faith. And now, William Conrad. The makers of l m wish to remind you that you can help Hungarian emergency relief by sending your contribution to the American Red Cross, CARE, or your church or synagogue. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Ben Wright. Harley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.